The objective of this video is to demonstrate one way to properly store a funeral pall. There are probably many different ways, it's just one way that I would suggest. I thought I would begin this video by demonstrating how the pall is used in the funeral service. And what you see before you right now is the pall and Right now it's laying over a table, but I would ask you to imagine that this Paul is actually laying over the casket of a faithful dead member of this congregation. And as we look at this Paul, we see that the Paul reminds us of the baptism of the faithful dead. Baptism joins us to Christ in his crucifixion, as St. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, and therefore the cross is symbolic of that joining. It reminds us that through baptism we are joined to the crucifixion of Christ. The casket is placed during the funeral service in such a way that if the resurrection were to occur during the funeral service and our faithful dead were to rise, the first thing that he would do is he would look up and see his Savior. So that is the symbolism involved when we locate the casket with the feet toward the altar, we symbolize the idea that should the resurrection occur during the service, our beloved faithful dead would see his Savior. Now we're up here in the Fellowship Hall, and the reason we're in the Fellowship Hall is that when you're working with the pall, you will learn very quickly that it is a really big piece of cloth. And so you need a big flat surface to work on it. And I have found that putting two tables together like this just about does it. Uh, it's important that the table be clean and so forth. The pall is made out of a material that's fairly forgiving fairly wrinkle free. You can put a wrinkle in it if you really try, but if you're halfway careful, you'll be okay. Now this is going to sound kind of weird, but now that I've got the pall on the table here, I want to give you a little bit of a tour of the thing. And you can see, look at how much of the table it takes up. It is a big piece of cloth, and it's hanging down on both sides. And one of the things that I want to bring to your attention is this seam that is in the side of the pall. And you can see the seam goes from one end to the other. The other thing that makes a pall interesting to work with are these rounded corners that it has. Because of the rounded corner, that means you have to think a little bit about how much of the cloth you have. You may think that as you're folding it or working with it that you have the entire pall, but in fact because the corner is rounded, you don't have all the pall. That'll make more sense once we get going. Notice that I have my Books of Concord here holding down this end of the pall. The other thing that I want to talk to you about is here's this cross applique. Now it's very gorgeous and very beautiful. And one of the things about this applique is if we pull back to Paul, you can see that the applique has a backing. Now this is what we want to do when we fold this pall for storage, is we want to make it so that that backing is visible. Because when the people are putting the pall on the casket at the next funeral, if they can see 
the backing of the applique, they can know how they've got the pawl oriented. And therefore, they know a little bit more, and you can use this as a, a kind of a landmark on the pawl to tell people how to put the pawl on the casket so that it's done with, with grace and dignity and instead of in a sort of chaotic and unorganized way. What we're going to do is we're going to start by folding this side about one-third of the way, one-third over. So we'll get this side over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of my books and I'm going to use it to hold down this end. And then I'm just going to pick up the side and gently lay it in place. And you can see the gravity is wanting to pull it back down. Now, here's where this seam comes into the picture. I'm going to take these books out just for a little bit. And I'm going to lift this very carefully and fold it on the seam. And I'll put my book holder back in place. So now the idea is it's folded on this seam. And I'm just going to go and walk this seam down the whole length. Okay, now we're going to just straighten things out a little bit. And when you get to this point in a situation, what you should have then is the seam is right here. Some of the fabric is folded under here. And we've got a nice thing about that. And see how it tries to get away on me? It'll stop doing that once we get the other side folded up. There we go. Okay, now you can see a little bit of the cross is sticking out here. That indicates to me that I, I need to bring the seam this way a little bit further. But before I do that, to keep the thing stable, I'm going to tug the pawl toward the edge a little bit here. So that more of the pawl is resting on the table. That way not so much gravity is pulling down on the side. And you can see a little bit of the cross applique is sticking out right here. So, so what I want to do, and I can reach under and feel the applique on the other side and make it about even. I'll take this side. Straighten it out a little bit. There we go. And you'll begin to see why this would be a whole lot easier with about two more sets of hands. There we go. Okay, now, the applique, I can feel it right under here. Okay, and that means the backing is still exposed down on the table. Now what we're going to do is going to repeat the process for the other side. So here's the seam. And 
Once I get it started, and pull one of my books up. And you can see now, when we get this side going, we've got a nice strip of cloth. See how it's turning into this nice strip of cloth here? Want to keep it straight as you're doing it. Get the book back out on top. Okay, now we're going to give a little bit of a tug. Okay, the cloth already looks a lot more manageable there, doesn't it? Now, what we're going to do, and I'm going to put one of my books back down here to hold this in place. And bring this around to this end so you can see better. This is the end with the uh, applique on it. And I'm going to start there. Now what we're going to do, and remember, I can see the curve right here. So the cloth, one fold, everything looks like it comes out to there, but the actual curve of the corner goes down this way, and there's another curve right there. You really want to make sure you have that. So to make sure I have that, I'm going to fold that over like that. Now I know I've got all the cloth, and I'm pull this up until that applique, the backing for that applique, starts to show. See, there it is. So now I've got something that looks like that. And then we'll take this and bring it out. So you see what I've done there. Now this ends good. Now we're going to do the same thing at this end. We're going to bring it up. until it just overlaps a little bit there. Okay, and then we're going to lift this in one more time and bring it over like that. Now we've got a nice manageable piece of cloth. And I've got a, a quilt rack. I'm going to bring that quilt rack up here next and show you how you can put it on a quilt rack and uh, keep it in good shape. Okay, I've got the quilt rack here and it's, it's a bigger quilt rack than we really need. I'm going to lay the quilt rack down on the table and I'm going to bring it along now, most quilt racks will have a crossbar like this. What you want to do is lift up the pawl so it's inside that quilt rack, inside that crossbeam. Then you can take the other side and bring it in like that. And now there it is. Okay, and then I went back in the camera and I see it's totally out of the frame of view. Let me set the quilt rack down on the floor.
and you can see now that's pretty much under control and it's inside that crossbar on both sides so uh, now you can carry it around pretty well uh, it's pretty easy and when the funeral director comes you can say okay see this this is the backing for the cross applique that's on the other side of the pall and we want this cross to be over the face of the beloved dead when you put it on the casket. And if they get the idea that that is the face and then the top of the cross is pointed down in this picture, if you get that toward the head, and then If you get this other side toward the foot and you lay it on like that, then all you have to do is unfold the thing and it'll be exactly where it belongs. Okay, we're down in my office right now and you can see there's the quilt rack with the pall on it sitting in front of the closet doors. The quilt rack is a little skosh on the large side to get in that closet. So I'm going to have to use a little bit of creative geometry to get it in there. But it will fit. And here comes some of that creative geometry. Got to get some of the clothes out of the way back here. Okay, it's in there. 